morning, guys. Welcome to Los Angeles. My name is Dakota Zinteris, and welcome to the first episode of Greater LA. We're going to all the ethnic neighborhoods in Los Angeles, picking a restaurant, and then showing off their cuisine and culture in reference to everyday life in Los Angeles. So our first episode is gonna be in a little block called Little Ethiopia in Miracle Mile. There's a ton of Ethiopian restaurants on this small block, south of Olympic Boulevard, north of Whitworth, on Fairfax Avenue. Fairfax Avenue, especially on this particular stretch, is one of the most heavily trafficked blocks in all of Los Angeles. The majority of folks don't actually just park their car and come get a bite to eat over here. So we're here to show you that the food is more than gourmet. It's extremely healthy. It's got vegetarian options, vegan options, gluten-free options for everyone. All of those Angelinos on those diet fads. It's got everything you could possibly need. And the most important thing, the food is amazing. So we're going to Lolly Bella today and we're gonna be immersing ourselves in the culture for a short time and see what we can learn. All right, let's go. Hey, Hi. nice to meet you. I'm nice Dakota. Me nice meeting you, Dakota. I'm Prey. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about Lalibela? Lalibela is a town in Ethiopia. It's okay. named after King Lalibela. Yeah. And the chef, who happens to be my mother, is also from there. So we named the restaurant Lalibela wow. after her and her family. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on in. We have All a right. for you. Thanks. No, I'll come never, but I'm with Runo Rona Pera, side left out with Chetavolo, Belena Perimasale, Semata Kato, Macanatum, Kayagar, Chetavolo, Ramis Ramintolo. Zagar, Uncook, America, Doctor Manning, or Metamar, everybody come on, Miss Arab. Strong, no, sir. So, come on in. Ooh. We have some spice and herbs ready for you guys to see. All right. Um, this. It's called Berbere. This is literally where the magic starts for really? every cooking. Yeah. What makes and breaks is this yeah. and butter. If you were to actually just try it on yeah. and on, it would be spicy. Okay. All it's right. not like you're not gonna be like burning flaming hot. And if it shows that it's spicy, it's actually not cooked right. Then. That's great. Yeah. No Ooh, that's got a kick. It. Yeah. <laughs> This is called goes. Um, it goes also in here in Aze. This is called Aze. Aze. So, yeah. This is but the butter that I mixed with either olive oil, regular oil, or butter. Okay. Pretty much. And this and it's is like the a glaze of sorts. Mm -hmm. oh, this amazing. is a foundation to a lot of the dish that we make as well. And this is called tef. Tef. Yes. This Key ingredient for injera. And this is what injera is. This is like the utensil. Mm -hmm. of everything. No yeah. fork. The process of making injera takes three days to start up, like three getting days. the starter okay. ready. And once you have the starter, then it's a 24-hour turnaround. Mm -hmm. So, right. here we have our veggie Ethiopia, which is a combination of different vegan slash vegetarian dishes, um, on top of the mosso, by the yeah. way. So traditionally, all, we, we serve food on top of this mosso and have it covered. It's almost like a way of like preserving food until everybody's around the table. Uh, so you've got green whole lentil, collard greens, lettuce, yellow split peas, Chickpea flour made into what's known as shiro, green beans with carrots, chickpea dumpling, it's called shimbrasa, and then you've got potato and carrots, and these are the salads by the way. You've got cool. of course the lettuce, this is uh, sunflower seed milk with the flour bread, and then you've got uh, tomato juice with the flour bread, cabbage and carrots, and red lentil. And just to let you know, if it, something is like yellowish or greenish, yeah. that means it's not that spicy. The darker the red, the spicier the food. Oh wow. mm -hmm. yeah, I can't wait. I'm so hungry. Let's go for it. Ooh. Great. Right. So you've got your veggie, of course, meat, Texas zone peppers, zone so peppers, kudfo. This is beef tartare. Nice. Mostly cool. served with collard greens and cottage cheese. Also really rich. And then of course you have the dorowet. This is 
the mother of all Ethiopian food. This <laughs> is the one that takes three days to make, including you know, the cleaning process and then whatnot. Wow. And then you have your egg, which complements the sauce really well. If you find anyone or a woman that knows how to cook Doro it, you wife her. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know if you know this, but when you're eating around your friends and family, they literally feed you. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. What's and that it's called? Gorsha. Gorsha. Yeah, and it's just for you know, enjoyment and love. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> the gorsha. There, there you go. go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the gorsha. Mm. And you cannot refuse gorsha. I'll never refuse it. Right. There you oh. go. And then oh, you have your so Dutch. Good. Oh, okay. So this is the honey wine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's fermented hops and honey. Wow. And it's, it can get pretty alcoholic if, like, if okay. you let it ferment for a long time. Complements the meal really well. It's almost like a dessert wine, except it's not a dessert wine yeah. because you have it with your meal. And it works great with the spice. And there you Cheers. Go. Cheers. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I'm hungry. So we have a fresh coffee bin, and this uh, this specific one is Harabuna Har Coffee, uh, one of like the highest quality exports from Ethiopia. And did you know that coffee is originated in Ethiopia? Really? So. That region is called Kafa, and that's where the co you know the name I think is adopted as coffee. What's the significance of your gown? Um, the Habeshak Elis dress. This is uh, the traditional dress in Ethiopia. We usually wear it for holidays when we go to church. Okay. Uh, it's part of our identity, yeah. and it's made uh, of 100% cotton. And coffee usually, you know how here we're so used to Starbucks going, going yeah, your yeah. coffee and going. Uh, coffee ceremony takes a while uh, because we do everything from you know from scratch. And so and it's a way of gathering around, talking about what's going on. It's a way of connecting. It's really a, a therapeutic thing that we do in yeah. Ethiopia every single day. So people take time. You know, when you're invited for coffee, you're gonna be there for an hour or two. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is the javana. Javana. Uh huh. With the coffee pot. Um, so this is actually in an Ethiopia household the most prized. Uh, material you can have, really, really? An object you can have, yeah. And it not, it's not that super expensive. Okay. Just, it's just you know valued highly. And so, um, you know, if you, if you break this, you're in big trouble. Your mom <laughs> would kill you. So, do you take it with sugar or no? So, there is an option. Um, traditionally, some and like in the country part, they use salt. You can try it if you've never Salt. tried it. Yes. How much do I take? Um, a, a little bit because, yeah, yeah this should be a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Just don't want to share with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you can try it with sugar too. Yep, you could taste the salt for sure. That's good though. It's very robust. Mm -hmm. It tastes like very flavorful. It's not like just like it doesn't taste like watered down or anything right. like you get at like right. a normal coffee shop. Yeah. It's definitely like you could taste the coffee a lot. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. It's very good. It's a strong coffee. Oh, but but I like to do something no matter. I am absolutely stuffed. I had the most amazing food here. I learned about the Ethiopian culture. I think if I go to Ethiopia right now, I'd be a part of the Habisha. That's how you call the whole Ethiopian population. And you know, there was a lot of learning done, a lot of good eating, and I implore you to come check out Little Ethiopia. Don't just drive through, park, come get some lunch, come get some dinner. You won't regret it, all right? We'll see you next time.